Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and it's Floral Friday! I'm going to show you how I intuitively paint this. Um, I'm just going to be going over as I paint it. There's no particular um, drawing tutorial for this because I just paint. I'm just going to stand up and paint and show you how I do it. And that's kind of what you need to do. You just need to have fun with the paint and play with it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to go over all my supplies. I have a piece of Arches paper. This is the, see, I'm showing you, the fine, the 100% cotton cold press paper. This is a 10 by 14 inch pad. This is a loose pad, so it's not, they, they have other pads that are basically glued down on the sides. So if you're doing a lot of wet on wet, it won't buckle or fold. Um, all my paints that I go over here, I'll talk about them as I use them. I'll probably be using some gouache. I already have some gouache mixed up here that's all wet, all activated. And this other palette over here on the right, you can't see. I have my water here, different brushes. I have a Princeton number eight long round. I have a Robert Simmons half inch oval here. I have a Princeton half, uh, three, four, three fourths of inch uh, select oval wash brush. This is a fun brush. These oval washes are great because they have these nice big round, you know, tips and flats and they make some great um, florals and I've got paper towel here of course and we'll just you know I'm just going to intuitively paint I'm standing up to paint actually and uh, <laughs> the contraption that I have the new contraption I have to hold like, my ca my phone camera and um, the lighting is hilarious because I'm going to be painting with this thing in front of me um, so if I'm painting odd you'll know why so I'm just going to start just painting. I mean, this is what you need to do. Just have fun and play. This is what I keep encouraging everybody to do. You know, I'm going to see I'm grabbing the water here. You can hear it. You can't really see it. Um, even still, sometimes you can in my videos, but today you can see a little bit of it. See, I'm taking the water off and I'll just start by putting some water down over here. And you see, I have to kind of put it down like I want to make the, I put it down as if I was painting a flower. And then I'll go in and um, I might use this gouache color that I mixed up, this really pe peachy pale color. And it's pretty watered down. You have a color you want. It makes these nice flat, rounded strokes. As you can see, I'm just playing around with how I want the strokes to look. Make one big flower kind of with this pale color. And you could have created the color in watercolor too. So you can hit the magenta and the yellow. See, that's my dirty water now. I have a clean water jar and a dirty water jar making that same kind of orangey peach color. Just a little more on the orange side. If you keep adding some pink to it, be more on the pink side. See? I mean, it's a little bit darker. Just flooding in some more color. And this brush can make some big petals and some skinny ones. So I'll show you what I mean. So you can make some on the side, just like that. Skinny ones, yes. Now add some more magenta, to a bright flower. The more water you add to it, the less of the, it's gonna be paler, so. Put more water in here. And I always dab it on the paper towel to take the excess water off. So I'm creating the color, but I don't want a puddle of it. See, I'm moving the brush up and down like that. You can make these little pointy strokes on the side of the brush just by holding it that way. Some darker paint. 
and bleed right in there. I'm just playing, like I said, with you know the brush and the collar and whatnot. And that's kind of a big brush. If you want to go a little smaller, I have that ha half inch oval. And I'm going to grab this, this gray kind of beigey color that I mixed up with the. See, gouache is like watercolor. You made it really wet. You can use it and manipulate it like watercolor. Make a very pale, like whitish gray. I'm going to. My gray over here too, I can add to it. And that's watercolor over here. So you can add to both of them. I'm just making these little strokes. Just having fun. I haven't done any greenery yet, but I'll get to that. I might make another one over in here. With this grayish flower. Kind of looks like, like a chrysanthemum. If I wanted to make it look like an anemone, I could do that. I can just kind of push the petals. Just like this. Closer together. And then you have more of like a poppy anemone kind of flower. Just like that. And I would go in and then add, add the center. So now at this point I might add some greenery. I take my Princeton long round brush. This is actually, this green I have is, the olive green is gouache. And I have the Van Dyke brown which is a watercolor. I like to mix the two. Get this greenish brown tone and this is going to have a nice point to it so I can stop playing with adding in some greenery just like that then the point I can add some darker ones to grab over here some bluish darker color and mix it I'm playing around with the dark tones. Just like that. That's going to be the beginning of like a bud. Go back to the screen here. Play around with that and make it into a little green bud. See, just playing around with color, paint, and I'll grab some more of this color again, and I'll stop putting in some more stems. Just really light and delicate. Put some up in here. Make one that's kind of like bent. You don't have to get so serious. Like I said, I'm just playing around with the color and the greenery. This paper, because it has that tooth to it, see, I didn't have enough paint and it made that um, dry brush look. Now that looks nice, or you could not do that. I'm gonna go and grab some darker paint. It's a darker green. Keep playing around with. While I'm doing the stems, the flowers are drying, so I can go back in and play around with. So I'm going to grab that. Just do these little wiggly stems, and you can add some like greenery to that. How you do that with this brush? I've shown this many times in my tutorials. Just pushing down and kind of connecting it.
connecting it to the branch. I'm going to grab some brown, get rid of some of that green. Get my paper towel, huh? Some brown. Some brown tones. If you hear that sighing, it's my dog. making some fun, simple greens. And I can put some, just little stems out here. You don't want to overdo it. You want to keep it delicate. And then put one kind of going up here. Like grass green grass I'm trying to connect that one I want to do another big green grass see it's, the paper has a lot of tooth to it so you're going to have to use a lot of water if you don't, don't want that um, dry brush look Just playing around, adding in some blacks. It's kind of crazy looking, right? <laughs> All right, so then we're going to go in and add some centers and details to the flowers. They're wet. This one's still very wet because I had a lot of water on that one. But we can go in and add little details. So I got that magenta here. Might mix a little brown. See with the brush, I'm going in and adding some just little details. Just pulls out that flower. And up in here in the pale one, can add in some of the gonna mix it up here because you can see it better. Again, details. A little wet so I'm gonna go take off some of the paint and put it on my paper towel. That's why the paper towel is really key. I use it often. See I'm just making those little marks but it really helps pull out take some of this brown the flower. Now on the bigger one or even the, the whitish pale one. We can go on and add some dark green rounds. See it's green color. Grab that green. Get this nice center. And then for the like anemone flower, I have my black over here. Grab some blue, some black. I never like to have it solid black. Black's a little cheap, but I don't care. And we can put the little stamens that come out of it. Also, if you want to put in some more shading of the flower, because it just looks flat, right? Adding some deeper gray tones. To that blood so you can just go in and mop that up. You want some of it to bleed but not a lot. But I'm just playing so if it makes a mistake like then I probably should have did the the highlights first and then put the center in but then I like the bleeding of it too. You see and then you can always just take your, paper, your paintbrush and kind of mop up some of it like I'm doing here. And manipulate it that way. And again, adding some of those little detailed lines. Could even make another color actually. Add some of the green. Just pulls it out, right? 
We're keeping going here. This is still feels a little damp, but I think it will work. So we're pulling in some color with this one. This brush, if I go on the side, I can make it a wash of bigger color, but then I have the tip. Right? To have that detail. Um, I have to, one of these days I'll have to have somebody see if you can film me standing at the same time that um, I'm painting to show you. Standing helps you get much looser. It really does. Um, I'm going to have to have my son figure that one out. I've looked at some videos on how to do it. I know a lot of um, some artists on YouTube can do it. They just have somebody that helps them do it. I just don't have that. Again, I'm grabbing the screen. I'm going to put some of that in the center. Put some of that darker green. The gouache is great because it's not going to bleed as much as the watercolor, so it's good to have that. Or maybe I'll have some black right here. See, I like that. It kind of looks like a poppy. And then down in here, we can put some little sprays of like little tiny flowers or petals or even fatter leaves. So I have the peacock blue, which is pretty. Add some of the green to it. It's like a nice turquoisey blue. So you could add some like um, eucalyptus type leaves. And then just make like little circles. It might be easier for a different type of brush too. But if you don't have that, I'm just showing you how. You can just make that. Right? Then you can use the tip to connect it. Just another color. A different type of flower. I might want to go in and put another one on top of it. So what's great about standing up is that you can kind of step back and look at it and say, mm, I like it, I don't like it. To me it's kind of looking like a little blobs over there and I probably shouldn't have put them there. But I did. <laughs> so I'm not liking that. But I can always manipulate it somehow. Wait till it dries and I can add some other stuff to it and that will change it. You know? Just want to change it and add some different leaves. So I'm going to use this oval brush again. And grab the leaf. This turquoise green color. Grab some of that Prussian blue. So we can like this bigger leaf. Throw in a little black. Just trying to get some variety of green, <clears throat> excuse me, greenery into the painting. And bigger strokes. So that's still wet. I can't manipulate that guy right now. So I'm going to go back and make some little teeny flowers. I'm going to mop up all this. I have these pretty yellows that I mixed in oranges over here. That's gouache. See how pale that is? And I could just go in and add like a little, a little spray flower. And those are just little marks I'm making, see? But kind of going downward. So they're like, almost like looks like a marigold. Just putting a couple of those pale ones. You're just adding some more color to the painting. 
add one up in here. Looks like a little spider or something, right? And then another one over in here. A couple over here. Grab the yellow. It's just going to give it a whole other look. I have this grayish green color. I could connect the flowers. that and now that it's dry I can go over all this oh I'm still bleeding that's okay keep playing around with that add some blue this is some bluish gray wash There's some black. He's putting in little marks. See, it's already changing. That blob that I made. <laughs> and put the black in here. And a little black in here. And put the little dot stamens. Just like that. We just keep playing around. Adding the brown. It's getting a little crowded. I need something over in here, I guess. Right? All right. I still want to add some more tones up into this flower here, the peachy one. A little more detail. Taking the brush tip, going in and out. Just gonna play around with some of these, adding a little more detail. And then get the greenery in here. Dark green. it's almost done. This flower might need some little help. I'm going to grab some darker grays on this one. Just adding a little more depth to that flower. And again, again, with this guy. Oops. Yeah, you can keep playing around. You can add little pink flowers down here. See, just pulling little blobs. They don't even look like anything specific, which is fine with me. I kind of like making things like that. You're kind of moving the color around in different spots. You can put some more pink up in here. You can actually make that a flower petal. Right. I kind of feel like it's too dark, so I take my paper towel and I'll just lift the color up. And it's more of a washed out pink. And I can go ahead and take my brush after I just cleaned it and add some water to it and actually make it a bigger flower. And this weird looking little petal flower. That's how you manipulate it. Sorry, I'm making my voice. I'm like bending down as I'm trying to do that. And then I feel like it needs some greenery around it. So I'll just plop in some of that. Yeah, because I felt like I was standing alone, you know? Yeah, I feel like I'm overworking it now, so I want to just kind of step back 
and just do a few more marks down below. Maybe one of the really yellow green. Almost chartreusey. Kind of like that really bright yellow green, the chartreuse green. Just throw some of that in there and up there. You know, just around the painting. And then when this dries, the pink, you can go in and, I guess it adds some of that darker color. It's doing the spider vein thing now because it's so wet. But you can enhance it just the way you did with these ones and whatnot. Just see how you're just playing with the paint and the brushes, you know, and having fun with it. So now I can go back to this part, it's dried. I can go over that and change that if I want to. So it's not looking like so much like blobs. Putting some more darker tones next to the flower. That's whitish, helps that too. And then some down in here. Just changes it up. Get some of this dark green. And you could put a leaf. So I didn't put one in before. Like a fallen leaf. Maybe add some blues to that. I felt like it got a little dark again, so I could either lift it with my brush or I could take a paper towel and lift up the color and then go back in, clean up the brush and manipulate that leaf. doesn't look so strange. You know, it happens to all of us. We say, duh, too perfect. No, we have our make things we don't like. I might be overworking it now. There you go. So that's just to show you how you just play with the paint, play with the brushes. And I had no drawing. And the more you do this, I'm going to go back in and I think I'm going to add. The more you play with it, the better you'll get. It's not going to happen overnight. It's just impossible. If you saw some of my watercolors a long time ago, you'd be like, ah! They're terrible. I'm going in and adding a little more detail. But that's how it is. It's like practice makes perfect, right? You guys got to play around with it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm just going to fix a little more of this color here. A little more orangey. Right? Add a little another dimension to it. I might just keep playing forever. I don't know. Add some little touches of orange down in here. Don't know when to stop, right? <laughs> what happens. You keep going. It's like a little disease. Add some yellow in here. A bit of yellow in here. But, you know, you just keep going till you feel like you're done. And that's that, folks. Look how messy my paper towel is, but that's what happens. So I hope you guys enjoyed my Floral Friday intuitive paintings. And see, I hate this. It's kind of a blob. Could I go back in and take it out? I could. But, you know, I have to play around with that. How you take that out? You go and add some more water. And paper towel it. It's like it never happened, right? <laughs> so it's not as dark there anymore. And I can go in and add like a lighter color. 
make it pretty. Play around with it. Anyway, um, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. And check out my Patreon. I have exclusive new tutorials there each week. Uh, this week was a fun pumpkin truck. Uh, that's just different and it comes with a download traceable to go with it, which I don't really do the much of that on here on, on um, YouTube because it's too much work actually. <laughs> I can't. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you guys just take your paints and play. You know, standing up helps a lot and just play pushing paint around, taking the little point of the brush and making little marks. Just have fun with it. That's what that's the whole point. Have fun. So have a great weekend. Take care and I will speak to you soon.